I'm, uh, I'm Will Martin. Um, I just want to start with a full disclosure on this. I work for a major oil and gas company, and these are my own personal opinions and not necessarily those of my company or any prior employers. Uh, this is also about investing, so I have to say that this is my own personal investing philosophy and shouldn't be construed as any kind of investment advice that is specific to your needs. Um, so with that out of the way, I just want to say that this is my second ASPA conference. Um, I'm very excited to be talking a little bit at this one. Um, uh, so I've been working in the oil and gas industry for a few years now. I've, I've worked in, I've lived in Dubai, I've lived in Singapore, uh, Houston, I live now in California. Um, and I've seen sort of from the inside the, the increasing marginal energy costs. Um, the the cost of, of extracting oil has gone up and up and up. Um, but I think my first uh, experience with peak oil came when I was living in Dubai and I was playing golf. He was playing, of course, he played golf out in the desert. That makes perfect sense. But uh, I was out with a friend and he mentioned that the course we were on used 2 million gallons of water a day to, to stay alive. And I thought that was a little odd because I lived across the street from this, which is the Jebel Ali desalination plant. It is the world's largest desalination plant. It uses flash distillation. And essentially, they were taking natural gas, burning natural gas, to grow the grass at the golf course, to create water to grow the grass. And I ran the numbers that night. Um, and the way it works out is my round of golf used the energy equivalent of flying on a commercial jet from London to Zurich. And it, it just seemed completely insane to me that we were wasting this, this you know, precious natural resource on something as silly as playing golf. Um, and that got me into thinking, well, how much of this do we have left? And that got me into peak oil, and that got me into thinking about, well, you know, I'd like to retire someday, and I have a 401k. I'm trying to you know, eventually be able to have enough to retire on. Um, and I'm probably invested in a lot of industries that are going to be really hurt by this rising energy cost. Uh, and that got me thinking about, well, what industries, you know, what, what, what industry would be hurt by this? What industries might benefit from this? How can I switch around the way I personally invest? Um, and that got me writing this, this book, which I'm calling uh, Investing for the End of Cheap Oil. So I wanted to start actually with little audience participation. So, it's rare to have this many people that uh, you know, know so much about peak oil. I want you to raise your hand if you think that we have passed peak oil. OK. That's like 50% of the room. Um, so there's, there's definitely some uncertainty over whether or not we've passed peak oil, when it's going to happen. But I think you know, most people in this room can agree, and based on the conversation we've had so far this weekend, that we are past the end of cheap oil. As we try to replace depleting conventional oil with more expensive unconventional oil, things like tar sands, shale oil, arctic oil, uh, it's just going to increase the cost over time. And this is going to cause all other types of trends that ASPO, that people here have been talking about for years. Uh, it's going to lead us to extreme oil, extreme from a technological standpoint, from a environmental impact standpoint, um, from a cost standpoint. We're going to have to have increased fuel efficiency, and with that we're going to have to have increased electrification. Uh, peak oil, just as we can look at it as the peaking of extraction of a finite non-renewable natural resource, so too can we look at other finite resources. So eventually we will reach peak gas, eventually we reach peak coal, peak phosphorus, peak potash, peak lithium. You can think about any other finite resource. And some of these are much more near term, some of them much further out. Um, but all of these will affect our ability to transition uh, after we reach a peak in, in oil production. Recessions, we already saw what some people have called the first peak oil recession uh, in 2008. You know, we, up until today that we're trying to get out of, this could be a, a regular thing in the future. Uh, and then the end of suburbia. We're already seeing this today with, with housing prices coming back faster in uh, more urban neighborhoods than they are out in uh, suburbia. You can look at Detroit as a great example. Um, the you know, people that can afford it are, are moving to places that are, that are easier to walk around, easier to, to get public transport and that sort of thing. So 
this got me sort of thinking about, you know, how I could construct a portfolio. Um, I, I started looking at all of the other, you know, investment advice out there for peak oil. There's a lot of investment advice out there. And, you know, it's things like buy oil stocks, buy gold, build a bunker, you know, there's, there's all this kind of investment advice out there. Um, and I started doing a little bit. I started, I bought some gold, um, I bought some oil stocks, and, and I so, you know, started doing a little bit, but I always felt like it was just piecemeal solutions, that it wasn't really a complete picture. So what I wanted to do was apply modern portfolio theory to these trends to create a diversified balanced portfolio uh, that would help you know, allow me to grow my retirement fund into the future based on, on this trend of peak oil. Um, and so, you know, part of this is, is deciding which industries you want to be invested in. And if you're like me, you probably started out with a diversified fund, something like the Vanguard 2030, you know, target date fund, right? And if you're invested in that, you're invested in the broad market. And that means you're invested in companies like this. You're invested in airlines, tire companies, trucking, package delivery, companies that are all really dependent on cheap oil for their continued survival. Uh, and you know, and I personally would rather be invested in companies that produce energy, companies that are producing fertilizers that don't come from natural gas, companies that are doing the kind of energy efficiency that is allowing us to convert to the electrification of our transportation infrastructure. Um, so what I did to create this portfolio is I started out with an equity universe of 7,000 stocks across from 114 industry subgroups uh, in 52 countries. And what I did was I started with a, I started by sorting them. I wanted to sort them into good industries, bad industries, and neutral industries. And neutral industries I would define as industries that aren't really hurt by rising oil prices. So Apple might be the best example. Um, from their sustainability report, it takes about a gallon of jet fuel to send an iPad from China to the customer. That might sound like a lot, but you know, even if gas prices, jet fuel prices tripled, it'd still be a very, very small part of a $500 iPad. They'd still be allowed to get the profit margin. So um, what I did to sort these out is I looked first, uh, I did a backwards looking quantitative analysis of all of these industry subgroups uh, looking at how they were affected by rising oil prices in the past, looked at their correlation to oil prices, their beta, and then I supplemented that with a qualitative forward-looking analysis. So I looked at some of those trends that I was just talking about that people here have been talking about and looked at how those trends would affect various industry subgroups into the future. I combined those to throw out the bad, invest in the good, and keep the neutral. And that gave me my equity part of the portfolio. I then added in hedges. I added in inflation hedges and deflation hedges uh, to have different asset classes, and then used uh, mean variance optimization uh, to create a portfolio that's balanced and diversified. So here's the portfolio. Um, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so the portfolio is essentially 18 ETFs plus physical gold and silver. It is 50% equity, 50% hedges, hedges for deflation, things like zero coupon bonds, hedges for inflation, things like commodities. Uh, within the equity, it's about three quarters in industries that should benefit from higher oil prices and about a quarter in industries that are considered neutral. Uh, for rising energy prices in the future. And again, this is a portfolio that is for someone like me, someone my age, this is a longer time horizon. It is not meant for immediate income, it is meant for long-term growth. Uh, so in the book I'm writing, I also look at how you could change this portfolio for someone that is nearing retirement that needs income while still maintaining this kind of, uh, you know, taking away the exposure to this risk. You should present your handout, is that uh, if, Yes, I'll put it on my blog. Um, I'll tell you my blog at the end so you can get it. You even have these slides on your blog. Yeah, yeah. Well, how would this portfolio perform if the trend in oil prices was downward over downward? It would, 
so it is, it is sort of diversified across a number of industries. Within the industries that benefit from rising oil prices, because it is broad market ETFs globally, uh, it should, things like agriculture, water, industrials, these have very low beta to the general market. And so generally speaking, it shouldn't affect them too much. They should have more upside potential than downside. Again, though, the, it's invested in energy, clean energy, things that would get hurt by uh, declining prices. How long was it existed? When did you put this together? Uh, about a month ago. <laughs> yeah. The, the idea with this is it's a very long time horizon. And over the long term, based, based on these trends, I believe that we are at the end of cheap oil and that we will have rising prices in the future. Uh, so, the, so the way it compares, I've, I've researched uh, a lot of the investment advice of other authors and looked at uh, portfolios from other authors that talk about investing for peak oil. Um, this portfolio is more closely aligned with the asset class weightings of uh, Ivy League endowments like Harvard and Yale that are generally considered to be optimally weighted for reducing your volatility and increasing your return. Um, it also has low fees. It has 41 basis points of fees uh, overall, which is below what the average ETF fee is. One caveat is that some of these ETFs are a little bit illiquid, so the bid-ask spreads are going to be high, and so I, I address that in uh, the book by giving alternatives for some of these uh, ETFs. So this is what I would just consider another step in the right direction. So I went from a typical portfolio, a broad market portfolio, to doing a little, buying some gold, buying some index, uh, oil index, to this, which is a more diversified, more comprehensive portfolio. Um, and I talked about, you know, you can change this for someone that's nearing retirement to make it more of an income portfolio. I also look in the book at how you would actively trade this. I consider this to be a buy and hold portfolio. You could actively trade this based on triggers. So you could look at the, some of the triggers look at higher oil prices taking our economy into a recession, how you would uh, trade this portfolio, how you would change the weightings based on, on triggers that, that usually precede a recession. Um, going further than that, I see sort of two divergent paths in the future. Uh, and, and this group has been talking about both. There's people that are talking about a collapse of modern industrial civilization from this, right? Um, and I look at how theoretically you could invest for that. Um, but then, you know, I, I think it, there's also a huge opportunity that if you're investing, you have the opportunity to invest in ways that can help bring about a change, bring about a revolution in sustainability that can help avoid that kind of scenario. So I also look at socially responsible investing, um, how you can invest in such a way that, that would help bring about the, the sustainability revolution we need to prevent a collapse. Um, and even longer term, what a steady state economy would look like and, and how the monetary system and what sort of investments you would want to do to change uh, for a steady state economy. So I would ask um, if you are, if this is something you'd be interested in reading in the future. Again, I'm still in the process of writing it, but uh, I have a blog. It's peakoilproof.com. If you're interested in this, go to my blog at the top. You can sign up and It'll, it'll give me a list of people that I can e email uh, to, so you can be the first to know when, when this book comes out. And if you have any suggestions, my email is here. It's will at peakoilproof.com. Uh, I'd love to hear.